Hello everyone, my name is Flag and welcome to another episode of Frag Pro Shooter video. Today, I have last season's number one player in the world, Godrechi, on the channel. That's right, guys. As you can see right now, Godrechi finished last season at number one and he is currently at number two in the new season. I asked him to come on the channel to show his gameplay and share a couple of his tips with us. And I also asked him many, many questions about different things which he answered thoroughly. So, without further ado, let's get to Godrechi's games, tips, and all the notes he provided us. First of all, you need to know that Godrechi's playstyle is pretty aggressive and he plays this style very well, knowing when to attack, when to go on defense and when to go all in. So keep an eye on the matches and take note of how aggressive he plays the game. Secondly, he has multiple variations of the same deck structure. The deck that you're seeing him play right now is a variation of his main tip top deck that he uses on ladder, but this deck is just as strong and he uses it quite often. I asked him about his tip top deck and he said if he had to choose between these variations then the deck shown on the left side of the screen would be the deck that he would recommend. The matches that you're gonna see are from last season but since none of these cards were touched as imbalanced this is still the deck that you should use. You can always take a look on the left side to see the deck that Godrecki is using in that game. This video consists of two parts. In the first part, I'm gonna give you the answers that Godrechi gave to my questions, including how he plays this deck. And in the second part, I'm gonna talk about Godrechi's opinion on individual cards. So let's start with the questions that I asked Godrechi and his answers. Here's the number one question. Do you play the same deck back to back or do you change decks? Godrechi answered that he tends to be lazy and use the same deck. But for games that are at high stakes, he prefers to make two separate decks for each map. But overall, he picks flexible decks that are good for both maps. Personally, I would add that cards like Runin, Lucha, Blood, and the boss are strong overall, independent of which map you're playing in. The second question was, do you always start your matches with the same card? Godrechi answered, not always, but he usually starts the game with Runin to clear the path for the other troops. Otherwise, controlling a long-range shooter like Fragman to support the attack would be ideal. The third question was, does your opponent's deck affect the card that you choose to start the game with? Godrechi replied that he mostly only takes a glance to see what troops the opponent is playing. But when you do excessive grinding like Godrechi, you just go with your standard routine. If you're feeling comfortable with Ronin, then use him until you get bored. The next question is, do you always start the game with attack commands? He replied that he tends to be aggressive. He goes in from the beginning, but he will keep an eye on the opponent to make sure that the opponent doesn't sneak in a troop like Ronin or Blot from the opposite lane. In that case, he's gonna go after that troop, go to the other lane, and let his AI do the attack alone. Godrechi added a huge point here, and I quote, If you wanna excel in the game, you have to know how the AI works. Here's the next question. Do you join your cards on attack, or do you wait for the opponent to see what they're gonna do and then decide? Godrechi replied, it's a constant assessment depending on multiple factors. In the bridges map, if opponent is not attacking, then Godrechi is gonna go all in on one side. But if the opponent is attacking from the other side, Godrechi might make a U-turn to defend, depending on which cards the opponent is attacking with. For example, if they have cards that don't deal much damage, then he's gonna ignore them and go on attack to get the opponent's bunker before they can get ours. My next question for Godrechi is, do you spearhead the attack or do you support your push? He replied, where run in excels is killing troops very effectively and fast and shattering the opponent's defense. This also depends on the starting spawn location. If Ronan is spawned at the front, then he's gonna go in the front line and spearhead the attack. But of course, there might be a cost. Be careful not to get caught by the super of your opponents, the boss. Godrechi also gave us a couple of tips and strategies that you could use in our matches. These are basically the 101 and becoming a pro that you must learn if you want to get better in the game. The first tip is that if you're controlling Lucha Muerta, you should just try to get Lucha to the tower and then switch to another character. There is no point in still controlling a Lucha Muerta that is already on the tower. The second tip is that a combination that he uses often is Blood Super plus Solatron. So he uses Blood Super to trap and root enemy troops to the ground in one place and allow his AI Solotron to use his super, the mortar shot, to kill those troops. Of course this doesn't always work out, as the AI is not too smart, but it surely does happen enough to count. Now before talking about the next question, you have to know about the tip. Most of the pro players switch their characters right before they die. The reason why you want to do this is that after you die, you have to wait a couple of seconds before you are able to choose another character to control. So now that that's been said, the next question is, do you always switch before dying? Godrechi replied, most of the times, yes. But rarely, depending on whether he knows exactly where his cards are, he might wait to get killed on purpose. 
For example, if he's controlling one card and he sees that another card like Lucha Morta is on the opponent's tower, he might choose to get killed just so he can switch to his Lucha after the first character is dead and get the switching character's shield on his Lucha Morta for a couple of seconds and deal more damage to the opponent's bunker. I personally want to add something to this. The shield is actually one of the reasons why the game is so offense oriented. Even when you kill a card on offense, you have to kill the next card that is attacking really quickly. Otherwise, the opponent usually chooses that card to keep up the pressure. And when they do, they get the shield and they can kill your defense card and keep their attack alive. So back to the questions. The next question is, do you arrange your deck in a certain order? He replied that he puts his main cards on the very end of both sides just to be more convenient. I want to add a detailed pro tip here. When you die, the 5 cards of your deck start swiping in from left to right. It would be a good idea to put the cards that you control more on the left side of your deck. So from left to right, your cards in your deck are in the order of being controlled by you the most to being controlled by you the least. This makes the cards that you want to control pop up faster and it might only save you one tenth of a second but in close matches these small times add up and can make a huge difference at the end. The next question is, and by the way at this point in the video you would have realized it by now, why does Godricky sometimes take some time on the map view before switching to the next card? He replied that he prefers to take his time to look around the map and see where his troops are and decide controlling which character would benefit him the most. Here's the next question. Do you prefer two lane attack or do you concentrate on the same lane? He replied, it depends on the characters, but he usually prefers to have all his troops in the same lane. An exception can be when you are controlling Oli and you can slip past the enemy troops. Otherwise, he would recommend concentrating your firepower on the same lane. For the next question, I asked Godric's stance on the shield. He said he understands that the shield might be annoying at some points, but real gamers can adapt to whatsoever situation. It has a good purpose and you should learn how to use it and take advantage of it. I asked him if he agrees that it's a bit too long, and he replied that it can be difficult to find the perfect time for it, but he'd be fine if they shortened the shield duration just a bit. Also in my previous video where I discussed the shield with my two pros, I got this comment from a viewer who had this great idea of making it so that during the duration that you have the shield, you don't take damage and you can't deal any damage either. I love this idea and God Ricky also agreed with it, but he said playing devil's advocate, it may be that some seasoned players might prefer to have no shield at all but to be able to inflict damage as soon as possible. Personally, I think the perfect solution would be if OBB would make it so that you have the option in the menus to decide how long you want your shield to be. The next question is, what does it take to become the number one player in the world? God Ricky replied, you actually don't need to have very high level cards. If you can manage to win 8 or 9 games out of 10, then even by playing 2 hours every day, you can get really high. But obviously for getting to number 1, you would have to do many hours of grinding each day. Also he added that in the beginning he kept on losing, but he learned from his mistakes and tried to avoid repeating the pattern that ended up with him losing. Also, he learned from top players to switch his character many many times during matches to be able to effectively cover the whole map. Additionally, he would never ever put a card in his deck that has poor AI. For example, he loves Dr. Crow as I think everyone does, but since his AI is bad, he wouldn't use him at all. Because as an AI, he's just a sitting duck. Next, I asked Godric his opinion on Champions series. He said that it is great, he did struggle a little bit in the beginning, since a lot of his other cards are only at level 9, but the intention of the developer team has been good and they have succeeded in having people play different decks. I also totally agree with that, I really think they did a great job with it. Godricky added that he used all of the reviving drinks that you get every day for free, and that you need to watch out on which cards you use your reviving drinks on. Also, a strategy that both Godricky and I use is using two defense or camp cards and three center wild card or attack cards. So before moving on to the part of this video where the balance of individual cards are discussed, I'm gonna add that Godricky replied that his aiming sensitivity is around 15 and his aim assist is set to maximum. Godricky also had a request for OBB about Shinobi. As a result of Shinobi's newest buff, when he uses his super on a card, that card is slowed down to half speed. If Shinobi spawns on your back, you might not realize what's going on and might think that you're just lagging. And so you don't take any action, you don't turn back to shoot Shinobi, and this can be bothersome. Now here's my idea of how to fix this. Similarly to how you get a blue target icon on your screen when General Mix drone shoots you, maybe you could have some symbol appear on your screen to let us know that we are being attacked by Shinobi. For the very last part, I asked Godricky if he could nerf one card, which card would it be? He replied, 
the boss. He said that his super is instantaneous and the AI is not so smart sometimes and can directly walk into the boss super. Therefore, he suggested a reduction of time in the super by a second or two. And I also asked the opposite question, that if you could buff one card, which card would it be? He said Cyber Cop. He likes the card and how he can deploy his super at location where it acts similar to a mouse trap to the enemy's AI running into the gate and dying. For the buff, he suggested an increase in his fire rate or his magazine capacity. So that's it guys for Godric's tips, his answers to my questions, and how he plays the strongest deck in the game right now. He has a YouTube channel, he occasionally uploads to YouTube as a hobby, but he likes to share his experience to have contributed back to the community. So guys, I highly recommend going to his channel to watch more of his gameplay and maybe letting him know that you're coming from my channel. You can find the link to his channel in the descriptions below this video. Also Godric is said if you have questions about the game, you can ask him your questions in the game and he will answer back through in-game messages. But please don't flood him with high messages because he's not gonna be able to reply back. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider subscribing and like the video. We recently passed 100 subs on the channel and since a long time ago, I've been planning this very useful video which I can hopefully drop as my next video on the channel. So certainly look out for my next video. Take care and stay safe everyone, until the next video.